Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we are tackling another viewer's request and we're using some of my favourite plants, the Sempervivum. And we're going to make a really modern hanging basket arrangement thing. <laughs> Let's get started. say a really quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed as, as we go live I've reached I think it's 770 subscribers which is wonderful I'm so happy and I'm getting loads of comments and suggestions and questions and it's all fantastic ideas for new projects and things that I can share with you so thank you keep it coming I love it one of the video suggestions I got was for a long-term planter featuring sedums and sempervivums that sort of thing because as seasons change as temperatures rise and fall they will often change color some go really quite vibrant reds they will have started green and they will as the temperature changes just flush amazing reds and corals purples I thought that's a really nice idea for a project I like that I found this modern wreath frame on the internet and I will put a link down in the description box below the video it's got chicken wire forming the bottom half looks like a basket three rings really good sturdy rings supporting the frame comes with its own matching hook and it's in a really nice sort of soft grey brown and it suspends like that now I imagine depending on what you're actually planting you could quite possibly turn it into a half moon like that um, you want something that can uh, defy gravity though or find some way of containing compost or moss maybe just with wrapping wire around to contain it within that space I've got some other pieces of equipment with me I've got some mossing pins these are really nice firm wire hoops and these get pushed into the frame to support the succulents until they grow in they will also help prevent the moss just falling straight out I've got a little pair of scissors. I've mixed up some peat free compost with some horticultural grit. We're not going to need an awful lot. If you look at the shape of the basket, it's really narrow. So most of that is actually going to be sphagnum moss. And then in a bucket next to me, I have been soaking some long strand sphagnum moss which you can buy from garden centres. This is not peat or sphagnum peat moss. This is sphagnum moss. The long strand variety will help us in this container because it won't tend to want to just fall straight through the holes. While I'm handling this, I am noticing that there are little areas where the paint is starting to come off. I'm not worried about that, but if you are, then you could give it a coat of uh, spray varnish to help protect it. What you will find is because the chicken wire is quite flexible, that's where the paint will flake from as it, it moves around. In terms of plants, I've got a selection pack of Sempervivum which I picked up from B&Q, which is a DIY store here in the UK. This is a pack of six pots like this, absolutely packed with hens and chicks, and it was eight pounds for all six pots. It's phenomenal value, and if you want to do a big planter, that's a really great way of getting a lot of plants for not very much money. I'm also going to be incorporating this sedum, which is called Coral Reef, 
Usually it's this soft olivey green colour, but as the summer has got warmer and warmer, you can see that the coral colour has really come out. And I might even add a really citrusy sedum called Kentish Girl. It's a beautiful, beautiful bright lime colour. I might add that as well. I just want to see how we get on with these to start with. So I'm going to lay the moss into the wreath and just form a really good thick layer. I've soaked it so that it's expanded. It will help it sort of stick together and really fill the space. And I'm going to go right up to the point where the where the chicken wire stops, just here, right up to there. And to be honest, it's going to be mostly sphagnum moss up to that point. And then my little bit of compost is really only going to sit just here in the bottom. And it's going to be a tiny amount. So that's now nice and full. And I am just going to lay some of this compost into the centre of the boat shape that is here. It's a peat-free compost with lots and lots of grit added. It's about half and half. And in fact, this is a seed and cutting compost, so it is really low nutrient as well. The sedums and succulents won't need tons and tons of nutrients. The next thing to do is to decide which of the sempervivums I want to use. I think for the central boat shape I'd rather like to use the big central rosettes and then to dot the others around on the outside and then add some of the sedum as well and that will add a nice trail to it. I'm just going to give the pot a little squeeze and pull the sempervivum out and I'm going to start popping off the chicks just like I would normally. So many spiders. When I buy Sempervivum, I try to look for plants which have a good selection of large, medium and small rosettes so that I can get the most diversity out of one pot. I'm going to take a moment to clean off any dead leaves from around the back of the rosettes just like I have in all my other Sempervivum videos. The young plants shouldn't have too much in the way of this, but the, the older, bigger rosettes probably will do. I'm also looking for a variety of leaf shape, texture, colour. So you can see here that I've got uh, cobweb ones, I've got clean ones with bits of pink blushed into the centre and then here I've got green ones with pink flushed on the outsides of the leaves. The only sad thing about buying Sempervivums from big box stores is that they are very very rarely named varieties and there are so many different types of Sempervivum that it can be really, really difficult to identify what you've bought.
Sometimes if you buy a pot that is heavily clustered like these, you end up with rosettes that aren't the prettiest shape. I wouldn't worry about it. They will grow through it. They will, once they've got their own space, they will expand and turn into lovely rosettes. Or you just pack them in really hard so that you disguise some of the slightly more misshapen ones. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> what I want to do is put the big rosettes here in the centre. And they will be as simple as laying them on the soil surface as that. I can pin them. That will certainly help secure them if there's any breeze that might knock them out. But for the moment, just while we're potting, they should be okay. I'm not going to go and remove any more soil from round the rosettes. I've already taken an awful lot off and the moss and compost that I've put in here will compress a little bit as well. I want this to look three-dimensional so I want to be able to turn this round if I was planning to hang it just on a door, then I wouldn't bother with the step that I'm putting on now. I'm actually starting to point some in the opposite direction, so I've got some crowns pointing this way, some more upright, and some coming towards the back. And you can see that I'm mixing up the varieties I'm going to keep turning the arrangement round so that I can get a feel for how it's coming along, how even it is, if there are any gaps that need filling. really want to make sure that I'm mixing up the texture and the colours as I go along. If it doesn't quite look right to you, don't be afraid to pull something out, put it somewhere else, and then maybe plant something else in its place. These are 50 millimeter mossing pins. I went for super long ones because we are doing an arrangement that is going in the garden. And I just want to, in places, wiggle these down in between the crowns and push it down into the compost and the moss. And that's just going to help secure that little rosette and that one which were looking a little bit wobbly. So check that your crowns are fairly well secure. If they're not you can always push a pin in which locks over the top of a leaf. Don't try not to break the leaf because you want to use that as your anchor point. Now many of the chicks will come off the plant with a little stalk on. That may be enough to secure the plant but it's unlikely. Try to make sure you're varying the sizes and shapes of the rosette and if anything feels a little bit too loose. Slide a mossing pin in to help support it. 
keep rotating the arrangement because you will see gaps that you missed on previous goes round. And if you can't quite get a greening pin, mossing pin, in to wedge a leaf or maybe a stalk to hold something in, you can create almost a little shelf for them to sit on. And I'm trying not to pierce through the leaves to secure plants, I am hooking over them. So that's where we are so far. I'm going to leave myself some pockets of space to put the sedums into. I do think that's going to look lovely. So I've reached about the volume that I want to here. I've made sure that I've got some sempervivums coming down the sides and that mainly all the moss is covered. I'm giving them room to grow in a little bit. I don't want to have to pull this apart straight away. For the next step I've hung the arrangement up just so that I can get to the undersides a little bit better. Everything looks fairly secure. Don't be afraid to push the pins in a little bit more. They will rust a little bit so they will get a little bit less obvious as the, uh, as the arrangement ages and grows in. So don't worry about them. And sometimes you'll find as you push one pin in, it lifts another pin up out of the way. So you might just have to sort of come in and squidge things back down again. They're fine. The Sempervivums can cope with this. And the next part I want to add in is the Coral Reef Sedum. Really pretty. Got a gorgeous colour over summer. And I want to just add some trailing bits to the bottom of this arrangement. And sedum, like most other succulents, will grow even from little bits that have broken off. You should just be able to see the little pink hair of a root coming out there. So this piece has been broken off the main plant for a little while, the end has shriveled, but it is pushing out roots, so it's going to want to try and root in anywhere along here, anywhere where there's a leaf junction effectively. So what I can do is pin this with the mossing pins onto the arrangement. should just be able to make out that I'm starting to tuck the tails right up behind other crowns and in that way they will start to root onto the bits of moss that I've left exposed it means we lead less sempervivum and gives this a bit more solidity You're absolutely bound to underestimate how many mossing pins you're going to need for this. If you do find you're running out, see if you can share a pin between a piece of the sedum and one of the sempervivum.
Another really gorgeous trailing succulent is Kentish Girl, Sedum Kentish Girl. And she will change through to these sort of apricot colours that you can see here, along with the apricot stems, right through to this vivid lime colour out on the ends. And as winter comes on, she'll get a bit more apricotty. She's got a nice branching habit, which means again that you can use this to attach in lots of places. And if you find that any of these sempervivum get too big for where you wanted them, you can pinch them out. And you can put that just straight onto a pot of compost and it will root in. And you've got new plants. Now, <laughs> Kentish Girl is, and probably actually Coral Reef, are protected by growers' rights. So I cannot recommend that you propagate them in any way, shape or form. But I have noticed that Kentish Girl will just drop bits. Um, sedum are quite a, quite a brittle succulent and bits will just snap off and I'm a waste not want not kind of person and I don't see the point in just throwing those bits away so I do just that I put them into a pot of compost and if they grow into a new plant so be it and sometimes the birds will do that job for me and Obviously I'm not propagating them and then trying to sell them, that's not what I'm doing. I'm using them just for my own personal use. So, oops. I love the mixture of colours and textures and shapes. There's cool tones, there's warm tones. It's a real cacophony of succulents. <laughs> And everything here is completely hardy in the UK, so I can leave this out all year round. If I need to water it, I can do that with a watering can from the top. I can give it a shower from the sides with my rainwater spray. And if it's got really dry, I can take the whole thing down, dunk it in a bucket of water, hold it for a few seconds and then bring it back out again and it should be absolutely fine. I may just have to sort of repin a few things, something may drop out, but normally it should be completely fine. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, to share and subscribe to me here on YouTube and until next time, bye.